In today's session, I'm going to demo on deploying a web application into a cluster of WebLogic instances using Red Hat Ansible Automation Platform. I have set up a WebLogic cluster in my local VM. In this cluster, there is an admin server and two managed servers. This cluster will act as my production environment. In addition, I have set up a DR environment. It is a similar cluster with an admin server and two managed servers. But this cluster and its WebLogic instances are deployed as containers. They are provisioned in the cloud hosted using OpenShift Container Platform. I'm taking this demo a little bit further by provisioning a centralized secret or password management server. This is a very common landscape in a lot of organizations. The one I'm using is CyberArk Control Server. The security is the one maintaining all the host credentials. Therefore, my Ansible platform will need to integrate into CyberArk to pull the secret or password in order to execute the playbooks in the WebLogic host. Same thing applies to the artifact repository where my Ansible platform will download the deployment WAR file from the Nexus repository I set up before deploying into WebLogic. Last but not least, it is always a good practice to use a source code controller server for your playbooks. For example, GitHub. Not only you can keep track of the versions and releases of the playbooks, you may also revert back if needed. This is a very important governance and release management piece. Now, here is the high level flow. My Ansible platform will first fetch the latest playbooks from the GitHub and then download the web application artifact from Nexus, following by pulling the password from CyberArk Control and use it to access the WebLogic host to do the application deployment into the WebLogic cluster, starting with production VM environment, followed by the DR environment, which is sitting on the OpenShift container platform. Next, I want to share a little bit of my experience about the WebLogic deployment tools I have used for the both productions and DR. For productions, I'm using WebLogic Deployer. This is a Java-based deployment tool. So basically, you use Java command to execute a Java class to do the deployment. You embed the full Java command in your playbook. You will have a centralized view of the steps and also the whole orchestration for. This WebLogic Deployer can only be used for application deployment. On the left, you can see the list of the supported functions like deploy and deploy, start stop applications, and the rest. As for DR, I'm using WebLogic Scripting 2 or WLST in short. This is a very powerful scripting tool where you need to write the Jiten scripts. You will need to use the playbook to invoke the Jiten scripts. Therefore, not only you need to maintain the playbook, you will need to maintain the Jiten scripts as well. This results in some steps are in the playbook and some steps are in the scripts. So it might give you a distributed view and also the orchestration flow. But WLST allows you to do more than just deployment. Looking at the list on the right, you can see it supports like browsing commands, control commands, 
and of course the deployment commands. In other words, it allows you to provision new clusters, new servers. It also allows you to start stop web logic instances. I would say it covers almost all the functionalities you can do with the web logic web console. Now, enough with the slides. Let's get down into some actions. This is my production web logic console. There's an admin server and two managed servers. Currently, there's no deployments in these clusters. This is my GitHub where all the playbooks are stored. My Ansible will pull the WAR file from this Nexus repository before it do the deployment. And this is my local CyberArk Conjure server. This is my Red Hat OpenShift container platform. And as you can see, it's hosting the WebLogix clusters. And this is my WebLogix console for the DI environment, which is hosted in the OpenShift container platforms. Similarly, there's an admin server and two managed servers. And again, if you look at the deployments, currently there is no deployment in this DR environment as well. This is my Ansible automation platform. Let's log in into my Ansible platform. Out of the box, the Ansible is integrated with the CyberArk. If we go to the credentials, you can easily create a new credentials by selecting the credential type with CyberArk Conjure Secrets Cards. So for this demo, I already predefined one. So you may give it a name, the organizations, and the credential type is look up the secrets from the CyberArk Conjure. Fill up the necessary information like the URL to the Conjure server, the API key, the account, and also the username. We can also do a test using the information here. Let's go ahead and retrieve the WebLogic password. to test the connectivity to my CyberArk Conjure server. It successfully looked up for the password. Now, let's look at the templates I have created. There are a lot of templates here which I created to do the jobs like deploying the applications into the uh, web logic instance, download the artifacts, list the application, so on and so forth. All these things will be as part of my Ansible workflow, which is this one. Let's go ahead and execute this workflow. Here it prompts you some parameters. For example, the username to access the web logic, the password used to access web logic, the application name and the web logic cluster name or the server name. In this case, I'm going to deploy the application into the whole cluster. That's why I'm using the cluster names. If you just want to deploy into any uh, specific managed server, you can just put the server name here. Let me go ahead and fill up the password.
This workflow only asks for the WebLogic credentials. It does not ask for the host credentials because remember, this Ansible will pull the secret from the CyberArt control and use it to access the host instead of prompting here. Okay, let's click next. It previews all the parameters value I have keys and as you can see the password has been encrypted. It's not showing as a plain text. Let's go ahead and click launch. Let's zoom on the workflow. You can see the workflow started with WebLogic App Deployment Projects. This is to sync and pull the latest playbooks from the GitHub. Followed by WebLogic App Download Templates. So, Ansible will download the deployment WAR file from the Nexus before it starts the deployment. Once it's finished downloaded the artifacts, it breaks into two parallel flows. The first one is for the productions, where it will start the production deployments. After it finish the production deployment, it will check the application list to verify that it actually contains the application that we have deployed. And the last step is to do an application test by accessing the web application page. And the return code is verified as 200s. Similar steps for the DR, but for DR, I have an approval tab here, then only followed by DR deployment, app list verifications, and app test on the web page. Normally, we will wait for the portion finish deploy, then verify, then only we will approve the DR deployment. But for this demo, I'm going to just approve and start the DR deployment as well. So you can see the DR deployment flow has been approved and is moving into the DR deployment. As for the productions, it's now checking the list of the application deployed onto the WebLogix and it's now moving to verify the web applications by accessing the web page. Okay, now the production flow has finished. Let's go ahead and take a look on the production environment first. Let's do a refresh at this production web logic console. You can see the sample web applications it is available now. If we go to the testings, you can see this application is deployed onto the Manage Server 1 as well as Manage Server 2. Let's try to access using the URL here. Okay, so this is the Manage Server 1 with the port 7003. How about the Manage Server 2? 
Okay, both are good. Let's go back and check my DR flow. Let's zoom back again. Okay, my DR has been successfully deployed as well. The application lists are verified. Okay, so now it's at the very last step, trying to access the web application homepage to validate it. Okay, done. So you can see the whole Ansible workflow has been executed successfully. Let's go and check our DR environment. Let's refresh here. Okay. So there's this application deployed into my DR web logic cluster as well. Similarly, if we go to check out the testings, we can see this application is deployed into the DR managed server 1 as well as DR managed server 2. Okay. There are URL here, but we are not able to access using this URL because remember our DR environment is running on top of OpenShift containers platforms. So the IPs here are the containers IP. Right? So we will need to use the OpenShift route to access the applications. If we go back to OpenShift console, if we go to network routes, I have specially created two routes to access both the Manage Server 1 as well as Manage Server 2. Okay, so let's go ahead and take the first Manage Server 1 URL. Type in the application name. There you go. How about this manage server 2? Let's do the same thing. Both the DR, Manage1 and Manage2 web application are successfully accessed. Thank you for watching.